Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to the next video series on my channel, Everlasting Summer. Now, before I do anything, I'm gonna read this. This game is a work of fiction and its author's imagination. It does not aim to offend, insult, or discriminate anyone on a religious, social, economical species, or any other basis. Any violation of the player's aesthetic sensitivity, active citizenship, or any spiritual impulse lies on their conscience. Any resemblance of the characters to your real or imaginary friends, neighbors, colleagues, Tulpas is entirely coincidental. All the heroines are of, of, are of 18 years and have confirmed their consent on participating in this game in a written form, and except for the screenwriter's medical history can be provided on demand. The game does not contain any propaganda or voluntary or not ending one's life. Not a single mascot, animal, or human was hurt during the creation of this game. Happy reading. Okay, so there will be a link to his channel in the description. So to anyone who wants, head over to Trebo1998's channel because he already has a finished version of this game up on there. Okay, I have no safe. Well, do I have safety? All right. Okay, yeah. I forgot I went through this game before and got one of the girl's endings. So let's just jump into it now. Also, if the music and stuff's too loud on this part, I apologize. I was having that dream once again. That dream. Same thing every night. But it's all forgotten in the morning as usual. Maybe it's for the best. Only a glimpse of memory will remain of gates half opened as if inviting me somewhere, with two frozen stone pioneers standing close by. And also that strange girl who keeps asking me. What does she keep asking us? Will you come with me? Come? But where? And why? And where am I, anyway? Of course it all happened in real life, I would certainly have been scared, if it had all happened. Well, what else would one expect to feel? But this is just a dream. The same one I see every night. There must be a reason. You don't have to know where or why to realize something is really happening. Someone desperately seeking my attention. Since everything that surrounds me is real, as real as things in my own flat. I could open the gates, hear the hinges creak, brush the crumbling rust away with my hand, inhale the fresh cool air and shiver from the cold. I could, but to do that I would need to pick myself up, take a step, move my hand. But this is a dream, I understand that, but what of it? What does my understanding change? Because here it's just like on the other side of the cracked screen of an old TV which struggles to fight against static noise and strives to show its audience everything without missing a single detail. But the picture is getting blurry. I must be waking up soon. Maybe I should ask her something. The girl. What's her name? About the stars, for instance. Why the stars, though? I'd rather ask about the gates. Yes, the gates. She would be so surprised. Or better, why the dot over I was called a title, but the dot over J was called a subscript dot. Nice letters. As if they don't exist anymore. Still, what do letters, gates, and stars have to do with this place? Even if I'm having this dream every night, which will be forgotten soon anyway, I've got to look for answers here and now. And there, if you look carefully, you can see the Magellanic Clouds, as if I'd ended up in the Southern Hemisphere. In a dream, there are the small things that catch your attention. An unnatural color of grass, impossible curves of the straight lines, or your own distorted reflection, with the, while the real danger which could put an end to everything right here and now seems trivial. It's natural, since you're here, you cannot die. I know it for sure, I've done it hundreds of times. But if you cannot die, is there any point in living? 
I should ask the girl. She's a local. She should know. Yes, exactly. I should ask her about the owl, for example. One strange bird it is. Though it doesn't matter. Will you come with me? And every time I have no answer. It's the only way, otherwise the dream will end, and I will never wake up. Hmm. I'd go with Chick. Every time it's so hard to decide on an answer. It wasn't that hard. Where am I? What am I doing here? Who is she? And why does so much in my life depend on this answer? Or maybe it doesn't. It's just a dream after all. Just a dream. Or is it? Where the fuck am I? That's a nice looking keyboard you got there. Nice looking computer you got there as well. What is on that screen? What the fuck? The fuck is wrong with you? The computer screen stared at me as if it was alive. Sometimes it really did seem to me that it was the conscious of itself, had its own thoughts and wishes, ambitions, that it had feelings, could love and suffer. As if in our relationship the screen wasn't an instrument, it was me who was a lifeless piece of plastic and text textilite. There is some truth in that, probably because the computer provides 90% of my communication with the outside world. Anonymous image boards, some chats from time to time, rarely ICQ or Jabber, and forums even more rarely. People on the other end of the internet cable simply do not exist. Hey! I would argue that, but I have to read on. All of them are simply creations of its sick imagination. An error in the source code or a kernel bug, which started living a life on its own. I just want to note, the stuff that you've seen blurry, this is actually blurry. Like, that's not just the recorder. If one looked at my existence from the outside, such thoughts would seem crazy, and a psychologist would surely give me a bunch of sophisticated diagnoses and maybe write at me a doctor's referral to the loony bin. We're loony! So loony. A small apartment with no signs of repair or any semblance of order in it, and always the same view out the window on the gray megalop megapolis blah, running somewhere day and night. Such are the conditions of my life. Well, of course, it didn't all start like this. I was born, went to school and finished it like all the others. I was accepted at a university where I spent a year and a half trailing behind and struggling. I drifted through several jobs. Sometimes it was working out quite well. Sometimes I was even getting decent money for it. But it all felt like it was not mine, as if taken from another man's biography. I wasn't happy living life to its fullest. I was looping over and over in a monotonous circles. Like in the movie Groundhog Day. It just... It's just that I had no choice in how to spend my day, and every day repeated itself, the same vicious spiral. A spiral of emptiness, misery, and despair. For the last few years, I just sat in front of the screen all day. Sometimes there were menial jobs, sometimes my parents helped me. All in all, I was able to provide for myself. 
No wonder, really, since my needs are quite minor. I hardly ever leave my home, and my communication with other people almost exclusively consists of online correspondence with the anonymous, who have no real name, no gender, no age. So in brief, a quite typical life of a quite typical antisocial person of his time. Kind of Donnie Darko on a minor scale, without doomsday-related visions. Maybe some highly respected author will write a novel about me, and it will become a contemporary classic of modern literature. While I don't think it will become a classic, uh, your story's okay. Or I will write one myself. However, what's the point of fooling myself? I tried many times, but couldn't even come up with a simple short story. I tried to learn many other things as well. Not gifted enough to draw, programming, got bored. Foreign languages takes too much time. The only thing I loved doing was reading, but, I, but still, I would never would have called myself a scholar. Perhaps I was an ace at watching anime and a grandmaster of lame internet jokes. Ah, my man. I got a man. If I were to get paid for it, I would probably be a happier person and a richer person too. But I doubt it would fill the hole inside me. Nope, that's what you need a penis for. I apologize. Today was another typical day of a typical failure's typical life. And today is the day when I have to go to my university reunion. Frankly speaking, I really don't want to. What's the point? The time I spent with them was so short. However, I was persuaded by a friend, my former university mate, and one of the few that I kept in touch with other than through the internet. What's this now? Ah, uh, the city. Looks cold as fuck. I guess. Well, this is us. A frosty evening. Bus stop, waiting. I never liked winter. Though hot summer is not my season either. It's just that I see no reason to point out any particular time of the year. Doesn't matter much what the weather is outside when you stay at home 24-7. The bus today was running so late that I was about to curse it all and spend my last few hundred rubles for a taxi. The idea of just returning home didn't cross my mind for some reason. As usual, millions of thoughts flew through my mind. But there was not a single useful one to seize on. Such a thought that you could bring into existence, give a shape, turn into an idea, and put into practice. Maybe I could start my own business. But where am I going to get the money from? Or maybe I could go back to working in an office. No, no way. Maybe I should try freelancing. But what skills do I have and who would want me after all? I suddenly remember my childhood. Or rather, my teen years. The time when I was 15 to 17 years old. Why exactly those years? No idea. I guess it's because back then everything was much more simple. It was easier to make decisions, no complicated now and so simple then. Waking up in the morning, I know exactly how my day was going to pass, and I always eagerly look forward to the weekend that I could get some rest and have time to further things I like computer football, going out with friends. And then at the beginning of the next week, I'd take up my studies again. Back then, there was no such worrying questions like why, who needs it, and what will change if I do it, or what will not change. A simple lifestyle, so casual for any normal person and so odd to myself today. The carelessness, the careless childhood age. It was also then that I met my first love. Her appearance and personality have vanished from my memory. Only her name remains, like a brief line from a social network page along with the feelings which overwhelmed me when I was with her. Affection, tenderness, the desire to care for her and to protect her. Sadly, it didn't last long. 
Today I can hardly imagine something like that happening. I would probably like to meet a girl, but I don't know how to start a conversation. What on earth to discuss and how to attract her? Well, I haven't met any suitable girls for a long time. But, where could I meet one anyway? The sound of an engine brought me back to reality. A bus pulled over. There was something abnormal about it, I thought. Then again, it doesn't matter. Only the 410 bus runs this road. Well, this looks like a hell bus. It is a hell bus! We're gonna die. Street lights pass me by. It's as if their cold light sparks inside me, trying to ignite feelings long dead. Or maybe not ignite, just awaken them. Because those feelings, they've been living in me for a long time, slumbering and waking up again. The driver's radio was playing some very familiar tune, but I wasn't listening to it. I was watching the cars passing by through the fogged up window, because people are always rushing somewhere, chasing something they need, stuck in their own little worlds. Why would they care about mine? They probably have their own serious problems, or maybe they have much easier lives. You can't know for sure, since all people are different. Or are they? Sometimes someone's actions can easily be predicted. But if you try to look inside his soul, you will only see impenetrable darkness. The bus was approaching downtown, and my thoughts were interrupted by the bright city lights. Hundreds of billboards, thousands of cars, millions of people. I watched the light show, and somehow I got terribly sleepy. My eyes closed, just for a moment, and then... Darkness. Darkness overwhelms our soul, crushing our fragile reality. I'm gonna shut up now. Did I forget to mention this is a Russian visual novel? If I did, I apologize for that, and I apologize for all the woodwork butchering I'm going to be doing here. Seriously, I'm sorry. Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first, I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Damn, looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't good old worn out Lias. Instead the bus was an Icarus model, a new one. I froze in shock. How? What? Am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I must be dead. I patted my legs down feverishly, slapped myself painfully in the face a few times, banged my forehead on the back of one of the bus seats clear either I'm still alive or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up at the bus depot. Then what? Did they put me onto another bus? I rushed out and took a look around. 
Here, look, tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers. Summer! And on that, I'm gonna end it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next part. Peace!